Let's go over to Ephesians. We're continuing that study as of the letters of Paul. We're in the book of Ephesians. I think I'm in the book of Ephesians here. I better put some glasses on. I welcome anybody who may be listening later on through YouTube. I want to tell you a happy 4th of July. Amen. Independence Day. You know, we, we're, we're independent in this nation from any other nation, but we need to be dependent upon God. That's God calls us to a dependence upon Him. Yes, he does. And He's not going to rule over us like a king in the natural, in this world mm -hmm. would. He's going to take care of us and give That's us all right. things that we need. Amen? Amen. But Ephesians chapter 2, we, we began there, last, or we continued on there last week. Like I said, I had a lot of things in red that we didn't get to. I put it in red, a note in red when it's an important note. A note that I want to stress, just something that I can uh, do here on this 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 pad here. But anyway, I, I don't remember exactly how far we got down to, but Paul, or the Holy Spirit through Paul is letting us know, he's showing us and telling us that we once were estranged. We once were strangers. We were apart from the promises of God. Yeah. We didn't have any hope in this world. We didn't have anything to look forward to. But in the plan of God, in what God had established and designed before the foundation of this world, even before He created mankind, God knew that man would sin. He knew that Adam would fall and that we were going to need a Redeemer. And God said, I will give that Redeemer. I will supply. Abraham would say, God shall supply for Himself a sacrifice. And He has given us that sacrifice in Christ Jesus, yes. that blood that we sung about this morning that will never lose its power. It's the same blood today. It's flowing today. We celebrate today the blood that was shed for this nation to be set free. But like I said, we need to celebrate every day. Every day that we walk, every day that we're alive, we need to be celebrating that blood that was shed at Calvary yes, that amen. still flows from Calvary because that blood yes. is the only blood That's right. that truly sets men yes, free. Hallelujah. We saw last week how that, that, that God has reconciled. He has brought back into fellowship. He, he says there's neither bond nor free, male nor female, Jew or, 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 or Gentile, but we're all one in Christ Jesus. And that's what he's talking about here in this portion of Ephesians. That we're one body in Christ Jesus because of what He did for us at Calvary. He is reconciled. He not only reconciled the enmity, and we, we saw a little bit of that, we got a lot of things that are racial going on in this world and in this nation today. And do you know the only answer, there's only one answer for racism. The answer is not found in critical race theory. The answer is not found in giving reparations to some people and saying some have a favored class over others. The only answer to racism in this nation and in this world is that blood. Mm. Amen. God answered it all. Yes, He did. Amen. He answered the question. He answered because the problem. You see, we we say, oh, the problem is racism, or oh, the problem is is this thing or that thing, and and man doesn't see his true problem. That's right. That sin in the heart. Yes, amen. Of men and women. You see, sin is what brings on racism. Amen. Sin. It's what brings on hatred one for another. Sin is what brings on the theft and the covetousness and the, the murder and the lies. Mm -hmm. There's only one answer. That's right. And that's in that blood. Amen, amen. That sets men free. Yes, amen. And that's what he was saying there. Verse 12, he said, They have no hope. They're without God. But now. I love those words. But now. Yes. But God. But now. In Christ. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes far off are made near. How are we made near? It tells us there. By, through, 
in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We're made near. We can come near to him. God has said, come near unto me and I will draw near to you. Yeah. Has he not? Yes, he said, we can come boldly into the throne room of grace. Yes. And obtain mercy in our time of need. We all need some mercy and some grace. We're all in need today. Amen. We can come to Him. The King of kings. The Lord of lords. The creator. Of everything. He hung the stars and the moon and the planets. He formed by the word of His mouth. He spoke into existence everything in this universe that we see. And he says, you can call me your father and you can come into my presence. You see, I don't think we get what an extraordinary thing we have there. That's right. Back in the, 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 if you want to call it the olden days, however we would say it, back in that time of kings and and even today, I guess, with the kings and and, and the queens or whatever they got over there, and even the president, if you will. You don't just walk into the Oval Office today. You don't go up to Washington and open up, you know, come into the White House and say, hey, yo, man, I'm here to see the press. That's right, that's right. You hear me? You don't walk in that way. No. Yep. They're going to say, wait, you got an appointment, buddy? Yeah. yeah. You don't need an, impo- an appointment with God. That's right. Mm. because of that blood that was shed at Calvary's cross we can come in to mm. I don't need to go to the president I got the king of kings and the lord of lords that I can come into his presence into his throne room and I don't have to be in any certain place because I can meet him wherever I am he's promised to meet me there you hear me I don't have to just talk to him at church I, can't, I don't just come into His presence when I come down here at the front. I can come into His presence mowing the yard. Yes, amen. Driving down the road. He can come into that car and fill that car with His presence. And I can know that I know that I've been amen. with the King of amen. Kings and the Lord of yes, Lords. Yes, thank you, Lord. All by that blood that was shed. Yes, amen. Mm. Having abolished in His flesh abolished, took it totally away, took it out of the way, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace. And I'm just kind of briefly going over a little bit of what we looked at last week. But we have that peace. No, we, we can have peace one with another. There doesn't need to be contention between brothers and sisters. We talked a little bit about family reunions and how sometimes even you know in our families there can be that enmity and that strife. But have you ever noticed that whenever a brother and a sister or, or two brothers or cousins, whoever they are, when they have the commonality and they are both looking to Christ, living for Him, looking to Him, that there's not so much that enmity any longer. There's not so much that warfare and that strife that comes about. Yes, amen. amen. He can bring peace to your family. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Lord. If we'll give our lives to Him. If we'll trust Him, He can bring peace between husbands and wives and brothers and sisters, cousins and aunts and all, whoever they might be. He is the peace. Keep the peace bringer. Yes. And He is our peace. But more than all of that, we have peace between us and our Father. Yes, Lord. We can have peace with God. We need some peace with God. Amen. Amen, amen. This world, boy, what, we're, what they're missing out on. What the church today, the majority in the church are missing out on today, that That's peace right. with God. That's right. Is it any wonder there's not peace? You ever go about and you say, I just don't have peace. I'm in turmoil. Well, if you look to the Lord, look to the one. call right. out to Him, that is right. amen. draw near to Him, you'll have peace. Yeah. Peace, what's he say? That passes all Mm -hmm. understanding. What does it do? It guards. It guards your heart. It guards your soul. Do you need some peace today? Call out to him. Start looking to him. Call upon him. Draw near to him. 
He'll give you that peace. Yes. Amen? Amen? Bills are coming due. He'll give you peace about those bills. Right. That's right. Whatever it is. He reconciled both unto God in one body by the cross. Amen. And go to Colossians 2, 14 and 15 mm -hmm. to further see what he did. He, he took away that enemy, nailing it to his cross. That enmity that was there between us and him, having slain the enmity thereby and came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them that were not. You know what that means there? The gospel isn't just for some. Mm -hmm. This gospel isn't just a European gospel, a white man's gospel, a this man's gospel. The gospel is for everybody. Right. Doesn't matter, red or yellow, blue or white, they're all precious in God's sight. And that's not exactly the way that song goes, but you get the meaning there. Whoever you are, no matter where you are, the gospel message is for you today. And what is that message, that good news? That's what gospel is. It's that good news. What's the good news? That Jesus gave His life, that He paid the price, that He spilled His blood, for you. It doesn't matter who you are. Yes. Jesus died for you. Yes. Had you been the only one who needed salvation, Jesus would have come and He would have paid that price for you because He loves you that much. Oh my God. Yes. And in His love, He's not going to hide your sin. He's not going to pretend your sin doesn't exist. God doesn't do that. You see, that's what man wants us to do. Say, oh, I love you. And his kind of love says, I'm going to pretend that you're not, the, the, what you're doing is not stupid. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm going to pretend that you know, you're all right. No. Mm -hmm. God's going to tell us, yes, he is. this is not good for you. That's right. I've said it Amen. before. God's never going to take from you that which is good for you. That's Whenever you come across things in your life that you feel the Holy Spirit is pointing out, you need to know that if He's pointing it out to you and that it needs to go, that you need to lay it down, that it's not good for you. God only wants what's good for you. That's right. Amen, amen. And He loves you so much that He's not going to save you in your sin. Mm -hmm. He's going to save you from. Mm -hmm. You hear me? He saves from sin. Not so that we can continue in sin Amen. that grace may abound. God forbid, mm -hmm. Paul would say in Romans. Amen. Amen. How shall we, mm -hmm. who have been baptized into Christ, live any longer therein? Mm -hmm. mm. Amen. A true believer doesn't want to continue That's in sin. Right. That is right. Amen. Amen. We don't want to continue in that old lifestyle. Mm -hmm. what, brought, what, what brought you to the place that you said, I need a Savior? That old right. lifestyle did, folks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That old way of doing things. Yes. Living for ourselves. Yes. Go, go listen to last Thursday's teaching in Romans. Mm -hmm. Living for ourselves, doing our own thing. That's what gets us in the mess that we get in. God came to set us free. That's right. Free from ourselves. Free from sin. The power of that sin nature. Yes, amen. He came and he preached peace to you which were far off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both, we both have access, like we've already talked about, by one spirit unto the Father. Yes. Now therefore, now, now today, present tense, right now, yes. you're no longer, you're no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God. You know what that means? If you're no longer a stranger and a foreigner to the things of God, then you are to be a stranger and a foreigner to the things of this world. That's right. Do you hear me? Come out from among them and be ye separate. Right. God is calling His people. Like we said, not in sin. He's calling us to a life free from sin. He's calling us to come out and be ye separate, says the Lord. Yes. Touch not the unclean thing, yes. and I will be your father. Yes. You shall be my sons and daughters. Yes. Come out. Yes, amen. Mm. We need to hear that. Yes, we do. We need to get that down in our hearts. That's right. That's right. 
a new creation in Christ Jesus. I no longer do those things. I no longer even desire. Mm -hmm. If you're a new creation in Christ, you don't desire what you desired before. That's right. That's right. You've got a different desire in your heart. Amen. For the things of God. That's right. When those songs at the grocery store pull at your heart, you say, oh, Lord, forgive me. Mm-hmm. That was the old life. The old life will pull you, try to pull you back. Mm-hmm. We've got to be looking unto Jesus, mm-hmm. the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now you're no more strangers. Ooh. No more estranged. No more unknown. What is a stranger? Somebody you don't know. Somebody you don't have any kind of fellowship or relationship with. You hear what he's saying there? But now, you're not a stranger. Mm -hmm. He's speaking up to God. In our relationship with our Heavenly Father, we're no longer strangers, unknown. We're no longer alienated. We're no longer outside. But we can now come in. We can now fellowship. We can now come and say, My God and my King, my Father, I trust in you. No longer a stranger. Amen. Put off from God or the things of God or the promises of God. Yes, amen. What is it, that song that says, Every promise in the book is mine? That's right. Every jot, every something line or something like that? You know, we, 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 we receive, we, we, we have those promises. Yes, thank you. That promise of fellowship, that promise of a Savior in Christ Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. No longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God. Glory, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ Himself being that chief cornerstone. What is He talking about there? He says we are built, we are like a building, we're like a structure, and we're built upon the foundation of the apostles. He's talking about the church here, people. He's talking about that body of believers that Jesus Christ has put together. And He said He's fitly formed each one of them. You're built upon the foundation. What is that foundation? That foundation is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He is our foundation. What does a foundation do? A foundation holds the building. A a foundation is something that the building, and what we're talking about, what we're seeing here is that building that He's referring to is the church, the body of Christ in this world that we are built upon the foundation. What is it the foundation does? It gives stability. The foundation gives strength. But the foundation also provides something for the building to rest upon. (coughs) Are you resting? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. On Christ, that solid rock I stand, all underground is sinking sand. He get it. The foundation is a place of rest. Christ is our place of rest. What He did for us at Calvary on the cross is our place of resting. Hence, in Christ. Resting in Him. Resting in what He has done for us. You see, the building of the, say the, 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 this, this building here is setting on a foundation. If this building were to be moved off its foundation, what would happen to the building? It would collapse. That's right. That's right. If the foundation were faulty, we got a lot of churches, we got a lot of believers today that are built upon a faulty, if you or they call themselves believers, but their foundation is not sure because their faith is not sure. That's right. That's right. Their faith is in something else, so they have moved away from the foundation that is Christ. And therefore they are on unstable ground. They can't stand. When the storms of life come, when the trials come, they're tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. They're thrown about. They have no anchor for their souls. And therefore when the winds blow, they're drug off and beat upon the rocks. You know the devil wants to box your ears. 
He wants to take you down. Because just your very presence of trusting in the Lord, of calling upon Him and resting in what He has done is a threat to the enemy's kingdom. Do you know that? Because you are a witness whether you, want, whether you ever say anything out of your mouth or not. Which if you are a witness, you're going to say something. That's right. You can't help but say, praise the Lord, look what He did for yes, me. That's right. You can't help but yes. say, God is my God and He yes. is my Savior. Yes, yes. You know, there's a lot of people trying to be a witness that way, but they're not living it. That's right. Oh, they still go to the bar. Mm-hmm. They still live a lifestyle that they lived before. You see, they're being a witness, all right. Mm-hmm. They're witnessing to the fact that they're not saved. That's right. right. You said it. Mm-hmm. You know? But if we're witnessing to the fact that we're saved, mm-hmm. the enemy going to hate you. That's right. He's going to try to knock you off that foundation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's going to try to take you and, and, and battle you. And he's going to do it by well-meaning believers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's going to do it by false teaching. And it's going to come in subtly, under the radar. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to know this Word. We need to be spending time in prayer and study of the Word. We need to be together with one another, forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together, but coming together and edifying and building up each other. That's why I need you and you need me. Mm -hmm. You realize that? We need each other. You can't have a body and it, it, it... Jesus would say, it, and you can't say because you're not the ear, I don't like Or Paul said, because you're not the ear, you're not of the body, or you're not the eye. We all need one another. That's right. That's we need the ears to hear. We need the eyes to see. We need to know. I don't know what you are, but we need you in the body of Christ. Amen. You can't be in the body of Christ sitting at home in your easy chair watching, watching on TV, mm-hmm. Amen. hiding out. There's a place for that, but yeah, I'm going to. If God's planted a church, if God has put a church anywhere near you, you need to be there. That's right. Yeah. A church, not I'm not talking about just any. I'm talking about a church preaching the message of the cross. Amen. Mm-hmm. You need to be there because God established that for you. That's right. Yes. <clears throat> he didn't establish that just to do something. He did it because there's a people in that area and he wants to establish more of them, but you know what? People won't yield. My goodness, I never thought I'd be doing this. But God puts it in your heart. And he puts a desire there to to reach his people, to, to teach his people. And if there's a church in your area, God has put that desire in that pastor. To, to meet the need of, of that people. And there's a people there who need that need. And if you're, you're there, if you're within 100 miles of something that you can drive to in just an hour or so's time, you need to be there because God has established it. And if you're not there, part of that body mm-hmm. is handicapped. Yes. We need you here. If you're close to us and you're listening on YouTube, we need you here. There's, some, there's stuff that the Lord wants us to do that we can't get done without you. That's right. That's right. You know that? Mm-hmm. Whatever, whatever it is, you might be the one who helps show, hey, I got an idea. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Hmm. Yes, yes. Too many of us are content to sit around. Mm-hmm. Just hang out. Oh, yeah, I went to church in my pajamas today. Yeah, you didn't go to church. It's all right. If you want to hear it, go tape it. It comes on again at 2 o'clock in the afternoon anyway. Mm-hmm. And then at 4, I think. Something mm-hmm. like that. I don't remember. But yeah. You can still get a double blessing. That's right. That's right. Mm. Yep. Yeah. I'm yeah. thankful for everybody that is here. Hallelujah. But we need more. Yes, we yes. need more. You're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself. You know what that's saying when he's when any time when you're reading the word of God when you're studying he says Jesus Christ. You know sometimes he'll say Christ, sometimes he'll say but when he's saying Jesus Christ he's pointing us back to Calvary. That's right. That's right. The anointed redeemer is what that word yes, means, what it yes, means. Amen. The anointed savior. Yes. 
That's pointing you back to Calvary. Anytime you see that, anytime you see the blood, anytime you... The cross should be very obvious to us that that's where he's pointing us back. But whenever he says Jesus Christ himself, who he is and what he did for us at Calvary, is what Paul is referring to here. And he's being the chief cornerstone. That means he is the one. There is no other one. But he is the chief cornerstone. He's the one in other places in the Word. It not only says He's the chief cornerstone, but He is the capstone as well. He is the one that not only holds it all up, but He holds it all together. Mm. In His body. He holds the body up. He holds the body together. As we look at who He is, as we look to in faith of who He is and what He's done for us at Calvary. Yes, amen. He is the answer to it all. That's right. That's Do right. we believe it? Amen. In whom? Who's the whom? Jesus. All the building fitly framed together grows unto a holy temple in the Lord. I looked up that word groweth there. And that doesn't necessarily have to do with physical growth. But that word groweth has to do with spiritual growth. Do you know God is more concerned with your spiritual growth today? He's more concerned with the spiritual growth of the body of Christ than He is with the physical growth of the body of Christ. Do you hear me? That's what that, that groweth there is a is a is a is a spiritual growth. God is more concerned that you know of who He is, that your faith is placed in what He's done for you. That's true spiritual growth. As we grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord, as we grow from faith to faith in who He is and what He has done, He's not so concerned with the number of people, but He's concerned with the spiritual growth. We got a lot. To, what does Paul would say elsewhere in other places? You are babes. You still. You should be on eating meat. You should be partaking of the meat of the word. But you're yes. still needing the milk because yes, you have not grown spiritually. Amen. God places, and Paul's going to go on a little bit further here as you read through the book of Ephesians in chapter four, and he's going to tell us. He's going to say he placed some to be apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the edifying of the body of Christ, that they might grow spiritually. Amen. Amen. We need some spiritual growth in the body today. Yes, amen. What does it mean? Just as it, as it means to walk in the Spirit or walk in the flesh. And I think we looked a little bit at that either Thursday or last Sunday. But walking in the Spirit has not, it doesn't have to do with doing a spiritual thing. It doesn't have anything to do with, with witnessing. It doesn't have anything to do with tithing and all that kind of stuff. But it has to do with where your faith is placed. Amen. That's what walking in the Spirit is talking about. Are you trusting in Christ and Him crucified? Amen. And if we're trusting in Him, then we're, we're walking in the Spirit. Walking in the flesh is just the opposite. That means we're trusting in our own strength and ability. Yes. We're trusting in what we do. Yes, amen. amen. How much of our Christian life have we lived in the flesh? And Romans chapter 8 will tell us that if we're walking in the flesh, there's going to be condemnation. That's right. That's right. But to those who walk in the Spirit, there's no longer condemnation. That's right. Because we're trusting in Christ and we have the help of those. You know, the, the, the Holy Spirit's not going to help you. To walk in the flesh. That's right. He's not going to help you to be a better you Mm -hmm. to glorify you. That is right. You hear that? Mm -hmm. He's only going to do that which glorifies Christ. How do we know if it's the Holy Spirit? Does it glorify Jesus? That's That's just that's so simple. So simple. But we get turned to feathers and gold dust. Mm -hmm. Gold teeth, whatever. Laughing and rolling on the floor. Oh, that was the Holy Spirit. Wasn't that a great? No, that wasn't the Holy Spirit. More than likely, that was the flesh. Because it didn't point you to Christ. It pointed you to some Yehu who says, or blows on you, wipes his sweat on foolishness. We need to get back to the simplicity of the gospel. That's right. The simplicity of trust in Christ. 
in whom Christ all the building fitly framed together. That means he's got everything in its perfect place. Yes, hallelujah. He's got the eye where the eye needs to be, the finger, the toe, the arm, the elbow, whatever it is. He's got it where it needs to be in order to do the work that needs to be Thank done. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Why do we fail? Because some of us have taken that spiritual gifts test and we say, oh, we're this. When actually the Lord says you're that. Mm -hmm. In whom all the building fitly framed together grows unto a holy temple. What's that talking about? In the Lord. What is a temple? It's a dwelling place. Ye are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Know ye not that the Spirit of God dwells in you? And if He dwells in you, you see the Holy Spirit wants to, God wants to indwell. God wants to come into your heart and into your life. He wants to be the, the King that sits upon the throne of your heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. He wants to dwell with you. God, He only dwelt in the temple in the Old Testament days as a stopgap measure, as, as something that He could do because He could not indwell the people because the sin that had not been paid. The blood of bulls and goats was insufficient Amen. that God to pay that sin debt. It was insufficient to make it possible that God could come in by means of the Holy Spirit and indwell each and every believer. But now, but God, because of what He's done for us at Calvary, because of that blood shed on the cross 2,000 years ago, God can now come into the hearts and lives of men and women and boys and girls and dwell with them. They are the temple. Yes. Amen. Mm. Amen. The dwelling place. Boy, can you imagine? Oh, Lord. Yes. The God that framed the universe wants to dwell, have a personal involvement. Dwell in you. Yes. Amen. Hmm. And he does it by what Christ did at Calvary in our faith there. All the building fitly framed together grows to a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit by means of the Holy Spirit. And we're just recapping what we went over last week. We're moving on to chapter 3. But you are built together in whom Christ, you also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. And Paul moves on here and he says in, 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 in chapter 3, which like if we I haven't said it in a while, but this wasn't written in verses and chapters. It was a letter written to the people to be read as a letter is to be read. Amen. Mm -hmm. He says, for this cause or this reason, this is God's plan. It has always been the plan of God to include all men, all whosoever will, whosoever will give their heart and their life to Him to include them in this plan. God has a plan for your life. We saw that <clears throat> earlier on. In Ephesians, where you are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. God has a plan for you. And He's drawn that plan in the blood of Jesus Christ. He says, for this reason or this cause, I, Paul, this is the reason, Paul says, for my existence. This is the reason for my place in the body of Christ, Paul says. He says, for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. There's no greater thing than to be a prisoner, to be apprehended by Jesus Christ. Paul, he never would say, never in the letters that he wrote, he never would say, I'm a prisoner of Nero. He always said, I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Amen. Are we today amen, amen. willing to say, Lord, I'm your prisoner? Or here's even one that will probably curl some hair on some people's back. Mm -hmm. But Lord, I'm your slave. That's right. 
Have we willingly said, Lord, I will be your bond slave. I will give my life for that which you have for me to do. I want to tell you what, if we will if we will bow ourselves, if we will put aside ourselves and bow our lives and give our lives to Him and say, Lord, here am I. Use me. Do in me what you will. Lord, use me to go into the world and preach this gospel if necessary. Yes, amen, amen. Are we willing? What Jesus say? He would say, if you're, if, if you're not willing to give up everything mm-hmm. for His sake and the gospel, you're not worthy. That's right. That's what right. shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Oh. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Are we willing Mm -hmm. to lay it all down? Only in that are we going to find the peace that passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. Only in that are we going to find true contentment. That's right. I didn't say it was going to be easy either because it won't. That's right. You know, it's not easy serving God. That's right. It's a trial. It's not easy following after Christ. Yes. This world hates him. You realize, I was thinking about this earlier this week. The word of God, the Bible, Mm -hmm. what Christ did at Calvary, the world, you can talk about anything else. You can talk about Muhammad. You can talk about Confucius. You can talk about all these other religions of the world. Mm -hmm. What is it that threatens the world and the world system more than anything else? What is it that the world wants to get away from? They want to push aside. They want to throw it under the rug, however you want to call it. The the thing that the world wants to get rid of more than anything else is this word. They want to get, they hate you because you put your trust in this word and you're willing to take this word. You're really. I hear story after story of of kids in schools and they'll be sitting quietly reading the Bible and some stupid teacher will come up to them and say, oh, you can't do that. Give me that. You're not supposed to have that here. The only thing that the world hates is the Word of God. They'll rally around everything else to get rid of the Word of God. The thing they need the most, they hate the most. Think it not strange Mm -hmm. when you face those fiery trials. Mm -hmm. Jesus said they hated me. They're going to hate you too. I think it was Donnie Swaggart I heard this last week. Maybe Maybe it was just this morning. I don't remember. But it said Christianity is the most persecuted religious group in the world. We don't see it so much here yet in America. But in China, mm-hmm. what's the biggest threat to communism? Mm-hmm. The Word of God. The Word of God. That's and right. people who put their... I mean, just think about it. They hate you because you put your faith in what Christ did at Calvary. That's right. Is that hurting them? No, but it's condemning them. That's right. Like I said earlier, being a witness. Mm-hmm. Our faith in what He did condemns them because it says God is on the throne and God is judging and we believe that and they don't want nobody else to because they don't believe it and they don't want to acknowledge it and really I think deep down in their hearts they know it's true Mm -hmm. but because they want to continue in sin and continue doing their own thing they, it, you know, we're, we're all do it. We want to push it aside. Oh, if I don't think about it, it just won't be there. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. God's going to judge everything. Yes, He is. He's already really judged it in Christ. Mm-hmm. If you deny or you don't accept what Christ has done, you're already condemned. That's right. The Word of God says that. You're already condemned. Yep. But Christ has paid the price that there therefore is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. That's what Paul is saying here. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. He is the prisoner of Christ. He says, If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me, 
towards you. That dispensation there, I just want to read here. There's a lot to read there. But, but that word dispensation, it says it's the, it, the, the word means the law of the house. The way the house is to be orchestrated. The way the house is to be run. God has a way that His house will be run. He says the law of the house, the word speaks in general of oversight, management, or administration one has over something. So what Paul is saying there is, is if you have heard of the oversight, the administration that God has given to me of the grace of God, given to me to you, toward you, given to me to take to you, Paul is saying. You see, God has for each and every one of us, just as He had for Paul, He had an administrative job for Paul to do to take this gospel message to the world, to the Gentile world. Don't you think that you and I, in God's plan, He has a plan for you. Whatever that plan is for you to be the administrator, to have the oversight in as part of the body of Christ, to take the good news of the gospel yes. to somebody. Yes, amen. Paul's job was to the Gentiles at large. Your job may be to your family or your children or grandchildren or those in the apartment building where you live or whatever it might be, but you have admission. You have a job to do. God didn't just save you to set you aside and say, ain't they pretty? He saved you to put you to work. That's right. That's mm. right. He's got a job for every one of us. Yes. An administration, a dispensation, if you will, as Paul would say here, of the grace, that administration of the grace. You know, he, if you think about it, that even points to Calvary. Yes, it does. Yes, it because does. Because God's grace was shown at Calvary. That's right. Mm -hmm. The gospel. We all have a responsibility. Let me put it this way, more so than a responsibility. Responsibility sometimes seems like a heavy thing. Mm -hmm. We have a privilege. That's right. There it is. That's you hear me? Good. That's good. We need to understand it's a privilege. Yes, it is. Yes. God has entrusted you mm -hmm. and me wherever we are in the body of Christ. That's what he's talking about here. He has entrusted each one of us with the privilege, the honor. The honor. Mm. Yeah. Mm. God sees something in you. He sees some people that I won't never see. You see them. I've talked, we've talked about this before. There's some people that you come in contact with that Brother Greg will never see or Brother Floyd or, 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 or anybody else in here that we will never see. But God knows that He's going to bring them across your path. And He's going to quicken in you. And He's going to tell you, that's the one. Just say something. Tell them the Lord loves you. That's right. Can I, we all do that? Yes, amen. But you see, God has placed each and every one of us and given us that privilege and that honor. We need to see taking the gospel as an honor and a privilege, not right. as a duty or responsibility. See, a lot of times duties and responsibilities, it's like we got to go to work. Oh, man. I'm so glad I'm off tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But, man, I got to go back Tuesday. You see, that's how we look at work. Mm -hmm. I got to go to work. I got to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning Tuesday and go to work. You know? But with the gospel, it's not a I got to, but I get to. I get to. That's mm. right. I get to whatever. Well, get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. We need to see that with our, our prayer time, our studying the Word of God as well. Yes, amen. Not, I got to study the Word of God today for God to be happy with. Uh -uh. I get to study His Word. I get to spend some time with Him in prayer. I get to, I get to have time with my Father. I get to go and share this gospel with whoever comes across my path. You see, we don't have to just go knock on doors. God's opening up doors all day long for us in just the normal course of, of, of our lives. Yes, amen. Do we see that as a I get to opportunity mm -hmm. to take the gospel? Amen. 
the prisoner of Jesus Christ for your Gentiles, if you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given, given me toward you, how that by revelation, mm, those are some things we need to look at there, that revelation, a revealing, an understanding of something that previously had not been understood, something that had previously been kept back, kept, kept secret, if you will, something that wasn't readily understood, what Paul is saying there, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. What is that mystery? That Jew and Gentile alike could be saved in Christ Jesus. That mystery that all men whosoever will could come and drink of the river of water of life freely. He says by revelation God revealed that. He showed that. He opened that up to me. As we study the word of God we can have by revelation. We can have an opening up to us something that we did not previously see before or understand before, but it's going to take us spending time with Him and God revealing that yes, to amen. us. Amen. Do you want some things revealed? Yes, yes. amen. Reveal to me, O oh Lord. Show me. We ask Him, show me, Lord. Teach me, Lord. That's what He's talking about here. Paul was saying that God revealed to him that mystery. Of the body of Christ. What is the body of Christ? It's the church. That's right. You see, they didn't understand it in the Old Testament. It was there, but it hadn't been enlightened to them. It wasn't until Paul, it wasn't until the Holy Spirit showed it to Paul. The message of the cross, it's been there in the Word of God from before the foundation of the world. But it took Paul, God revealing it to Paul, yes. that it's faith in Christ, it's faith in the sacrifice that God's looking for. Yes. Mm. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you. When we Lord. couldn't do it on our own, He did it for us. Yes. Amen. Amen. How that by revelation He made known unto me the mystery. He says, as I wrote before in a few words, was it, I, He probably referring maybe to another letter he had written, or possibly to just what he's written in just this little bit of this letter. Mm-hmm. Whereby when you read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, how that God was at work reconciling the world unto himself. You see, the Jews, they got a, they got a haughty and a, a high-minded, they got a, spiritual pride if you will they got proud saying oh we've been chosen by God therefore we're better than those dog of a Gentile but they didn't see that God all the while was including the Gentiles in his plan of salvation the Jews thought that they were something special a a higher being a higher race or whatever in, 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 in what God had done for them how many times do we get that way? Yes, amen. Amen. Oh, well, God has shown me something that He hadn't showed Sister Somebody mm-hmm. or showed Sister Somebody something and she thinks she's somebody. Uh-uh. What have we said before? As we understand the message of the cross, yes, it's going to let us see, O oh, wretched man that I am. It's going to let us see how much more You see, if you're growing in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord, if you're growing in your understanding of the message of the cross, as we call it, the word of the cross, the preaching of the cross, the understanding of what Christ did at Calvary. You see, that's what the message of the cross is. It's our understanding and our faith placed in what Christ has done for us at Calvary. I've said it before, if you don't know it, you can't place your faith in it. If you don't know it, you can't walk in it. So the Holy Spirit reveals to us, it, through different people, different means, He reveals to us that message, that Word, all that Jesus Christ has done for us at Calvary. And you see, we sell ourselves short when we say Calvary and salvation and the cross is just all about just, just 
being saved, but we don't really realize what being saved is. We think being, if we limit being saved and we limit salvation to just not going to hell, then we don't know what Jesus did for us at Calvary. Because that is only a small part of the message of the cross. Not going to hell is only a small part of your salvation. Do you realize that word salvation? Go study it out. It covers everything. Yes, hallelujah. I mean, all the way around. Sozo, I think, or yeah, maybe it's Sozo. I can't remember if that's, yeah, Zoe's life. Sozo is salvation. Mm -hmm. But it covers everything. Everything Adam lost. You know that? Everything he had before the fall, we can have too. Thank you, Lord. Now, Hallelujah. because of what Jesus did, yes. Yes. Adam had access yes. to the Father. You can have access to the Father yes. now. Amen. Adam Amen. had peace. He had joy then. You can have that peace and that joy now yes. because of what Christ has done if you'll just put your trust in him. You see, that's all God's asking for. Trust me. Believe. Faith. It's all the same. Yes. Trust and believe in faith. You know, we've said it before. That, 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 that word believe comes from a Celtic word that says be living. That's right. What you be believing, you will be living. That's exactly right. Amen. Amen. You yes, hear that? Amen. How, do you, how, how do you know what somebody's believing? Because that's how they be living. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. It's no longer a mystery. That's right. It's all been revealed. It was revealed in Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary. That's right. That God would reconcile the world. Whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. What does it yes. say there in Ephesians in 4? He gave some to be apostles, mm -hmm. prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Some. He didn't, mean, he didn't say that he, it was only for Paul mm -hmm. and Peter and James and John. Do you know he's still revealing things to us today? Yes, he is. Glory From faith to, your name, Lord. to faith. Hallelujah. Line upon line. Blessed what is it? Line upon line? Precept upon precept? Here a little, there a little? He'll reveal it to you. He'll reveal it to me. He'll reveal it to those around us. But that's why we need to come together as a body. That's why we don't need to be forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. That's why if we're going to be that building fitly joined together, you got to be joined. You know, I was thinking about when you build a house. If you just put up one wall, they were doing some brickwork down here on Highway 4 in an addition. They had only a part of it up. The wind came and blew it down. That's a big mess. But as being the building of the Holy Spirit of the Lord, if you only got one wall up on a house, you can have it braced, but the wind can still take it. You know, whenever you build a house... You brace those walls until you get the other walls built and everything ties together. Amen, amen. Everything is fitly joined together. You know, in a, in a house house, a tornado can come blow it down. But in a house that Jesus builds, that's, right. mm, that's built upon that foundation, uh -huh. ain't no wind going to come blow it down. Amen. Because He's going to build His house. And it's going to be fitly formed together. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yes. That means when we take this gospel, if we take it even to the gates of hell, wherever they may be on skid row or, or, or homosexual den, whatever, or, yes. or, or whatever it is, Hallelujah. when we take this gospel message that the gates of hell cannot prevail That's against right. it That's by right. the word of God, they shall fall just like Jericho's yes. walls fell down by the word of Almighty God. Yes. Mm. Hallelujah. What did Joshua and them do? They marched 
and they blew the trumpet. That's right. And God says, shout, That's right. for I have given you yes. the victory. Can you imagine the yes. fireworks yes. of that day yes. when you. the people of God said, woo and it just went whoosh. That's right. You know, they say in those ruins that it looks like somebody just went up to them and pushed. Those walls down. Oh my God. Oh, glory. God did it. Hallelujah. If He did that for them, don't you think? That was before the cross. That's right. Boy, some of these people, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're pros at saying, oh, well, the Old Testament doesn't apply today because that was before Calvary. Well, you know what? If God did that before Calvary, what will He do today? That's exactly mm. right. That's exactly right. What can right. we trust Him for today? That's now that the price has been paid and the blood has been shed before God did that, what will He do for you and I today? And what we need to do is shout for God has given us the victory. Amen? Amen. Mm. Amen. We're going to have to stop here in a minute. <laughs> Whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now revealed. That doesn't mean it wasn't there. You see what he's saying there? How he's worded that? As it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. It could not be revealed then because the sin debt wasn't paid. And the Holy Spirit didn't come in and indwell on a permanent basis. That's right. But now that he does, yes. it can be revealed to anybody and everybody who's asking. That's right. Amen. Amen. As it is now revealed to his apostles and prophets by the spirits that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of the promises in Christ by the gospel. Amen. Amen. I said the promises because the definite article is there by the promise. That's right. Or by promises. That's right. The promises, those promises that God made to Abraham apply for you and I today. Amen. Do Lord, you know that? Hallelujah. He said Abraham would be the father of all those who put their faith in that sacrifice. The father of faith, the fountainhead of faith, of the faith of Christ and Him crucified. Mm -hmm. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs that's good news for you and me because I don't think any of us are Jews. Mm -mm. But we are now fellow heirs. What did we learn about heirs here a while back? Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to tie all this together sometimes. Heirs. When do we receive our heirship? When do we receive what is ours? What did we learn about that? Mm -hmm. Huh? We receive, we are heirs, and we receive our inheritance mm -hmm. when? Not when he dies, because God ain't never going to die. Y'all remember that? Roman law is what was referred to then. Whenever somebody was, whenever a child was born into a family, that child received everything that was the father's at the time of his birth. You remember that? We receive everything that is our Father's. Everything that was lost in the fall. We don't have to wait for God to die because He ain't going to die. We receive everything. We are heirs. Heirs of God. Joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We receive our inheritance when we're born. When are we born? When we put our faith. Born again. Amen. Mm. You must be born again. Hallelujah. When you're born again, you yes. receive everything oh that is the. Do we get that? Yes. Everything that was our Father has is ours. Yes. When we're born Thank again, you. because of the blood. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We don't have to wait till we die. Thank you, we don't. God's not going to die. You see, I had a little bit of a the thing with the air until I read that and understood that. Until God revealed it to me. Yes. Sometimes He'll use other people to reveal things to you. 
I was reading Wiest whenever, at that particular time on, the, on that particular subject. And it brought out that thing of the Roman, the Roman law of that time of receiving your inheritance at the time of birth. And I said, that's it. That's how we receive everything from God. Right. Not waiting for Him to die or us to die. Mm -hmm. But when we're born that's right. at, birth, at birth, it's ours. Yes. It's yours. Now, yes. if you're saved, that's right. that's it. we don't know. We don't receive it because we don't know we have it, that's right. do we? This world has salvation available. That's right. Whoever you are out there in this world, you have salvation available to you. Mm -hmm. It is yours to receive by faith. That's right. You see, everything we receive from God, we receive by faith. We receive salvation, initial salvation, being born again. We receive that by faith. And everything after that, that God has in heaven, that He has in store for us in heaven, we have at the moment we're born again. Receive it. What do you need today? You need the baptism in the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Receive it. It's yours today. If you're born again, you need some health, you need some strength, whatever it is you need. God has it for you. Just receive it today Amen. in Jesus Christ. Yes. He has provided it for you. It's already provided like we yes. said. Thank do you God. not know? Yes. Now you do. Hallelujah. I hope we understand. Hallelujah. It's ours in Christ. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same, same body. body. Mm -hmm. God's yes, no Lord, respecter of persons. He doesn't shut out some and allow in others. That's he doesn't right. say, oh, because you don't measure up, you don't get to receive this. Whosoever will, come, let him drink of the river of life freely. Fellow heirs and of the same body, hmm, and partakers of His promises. Thank you, Lord. What's a partaker? Somebody who joins in. Mm -hmm. Somebody who has a part. Mm, just like that body of Christ, and we all have a part in that body. We all are administrators. We all have that dispensation, if you will, as Paul called it there. We all have a part in the body. We are all partakers of the promises. How? In Christ. Yes. By who He is and what He did for us at Calvary. In Christ, by the gospel. Paul says, whereof I am made a minister. Amen. We're all ministers. That's right. That's that minister right. there is a servant. Mm -hmm. Let me see, make for sure exactly. I got my notes there. A minister, a servant, a deacon. Mm -hmm. He's a whereof I am made a minister. Mm -hmm. One the the word also means one. Get this, one who labors in the dirt. That's right. A minister. There you go. One who labors in yes. the dirt. Yes. He's not somebody who says, <clears throat> "I'm the pastor and I got all the authority." <laughs> Or I'm the deacon and I say this, that, or the other. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. There's no pride in that. That's right. You hear what that's saying? A minister, one who labors in, in the, the dirt. dirt. That's it. That's What's the it. word of God tell us as well? One tills, mm -hmm. one plants, mm -hmm. one waters. That's right. Are we laboring in the dirt? That's right. Are that's we tilling? Right. Are we planting? What are we tilling and planting and watering? The word of God. That's right. Each one of us has a dispensation has an administration to be a tiller a waterer a a, 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 a a planter a sower of the seed in somebody's life mm -hmm. God's getting us ready folks yes he is yes, there's he a is. harvest to come in it's coming he's getting yes. us ready to go out into the highways and the byways yes, he is. and to water to plant mm -hmm. 
a till, whatever it takes. That's right. Sometimes we feel like we're tilling in a concrete driveway because mm-hmm. that ground is so hard. But keep on tilling. Keep on. Keep whoever on. they are, whoever their heart is that's so hard that you think there's no hope for them, keep on tilling. Keep on. That son, that daughter, that mm-hmm. brother, whoever it might be, keep tilling. Sooner or later, that plow of the Holy Ghost is going to break up that that's concrete. Right, that's right. Sooner or later, that washing of the water. Do you know water yes. is the ultimate solvent? That's right. It can eat through anything that's given right. enough time. Yes. Get that water of the Word. Oh, Be that God. one. What does He say? Yes. Out of your belly shall flow rivers, rivers of, living. of living water. Let oh, that living yes. water flow through me. Isn't there yes. a song that says that? Let that living water flow forth from me to the world around me and sooner or later as they're watching and I'll guarantee you they're watching you, whoever they are. They're watching you and if that Holy Ghost water, that river of life is flowing out from you, it's going to break down that concrete. It's going to break it down. It's going to wear it down until you get down to good ground that some seed can be planted in. Amen. The body of Christ. That building, mm-hmm. fitly joined together, we all have a part. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Ask yes. the Lord, yes. Lord, what's my part? Yes. Who do you want me to water today? Who do you want me to till? Where do you want me to till? Where do you want me to plant? Where do you want me to scatter seed? It's God. As we talked about there, where it, it, it talked about uh, growing, that growth, being spiritual growth. It's God that gives the increase. It's up to you and I to do the laboring in the dirt. That's right. The ministering. Mm-hmm. And sending that word forth. However we can, whatever means He's given us. Send forth. Start doing some labor. Being a minister. Because that's what He's called us to be. Yes, amen. He hasn't called us to shut up. What did he say about that unjust servant? Kept that, buried it in the ground. He said, you faith, you, 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 you wicked servant. Take from him that one that he had and give it to the guy that had five or ten. Lord, don't let me be the one that buries it in the ground. But Lord, that I be the one. Whatever you've given. And it doesn't tell you, oh, I don't know enough of the gospel to give it. He saved you. All you need to do is tell him what he did for you. That little bit, what He did for you, He'll do for them as well. Amen. Let's commit this morning to take this gospel to the world around us. To be that minister. Amen. To share this word, to spread this word to the world around us. Let's just sing this as we close this morning. And sing it from your heart. And mean it. And make it a prayer to the Lord. Amen. Let's sing it. Don't refuse me Surely there's a work that I can do Even though it's humble Lord, help my will to grow Though the cost be great I'll work for you
I was able to encourage them to stay strong. I was able to encourage them in the day that they just thought that they were going to going to going to fall down and fold up and quit. I was able to encourage them. See, that's what the devil's afraid of. Yes. He's afraid that you're going to get something mm-hmm. from the Lord and you're going to give it to somebody else mm-hmm. and it's going to make a difference in their life. That's, right. that's, that's what God wants. That's, right. that's what the devil's yes. afraid of. That's, right. that's why he comes against that's you, why he bombards you, why he says, oh, you can't say it good enough. Mm-hmm. You don't have to say it good enough. No. Amen. What's the Holy? He says, when the, the, in that day, the Holy Spirit will tell you what to That's say. Exactly right. Just trust Him. Amen? Yeah. Trust Amen. Don't forget, we got, we're got we celebrating the 4th this afternoon. Hamburgers and hot dogs and whatever else we got back there. Watermelon. Good watermelon. <laughs> so don't forget that. Um, Jasper, you want to dismiss us in prayer?